Welcome to another episode of our personal empowerment audio program, Finding Yourself in Paradise. Hi, I'm Michael Benner. And I'm Steve Snyder. And our program today is entitled Self-Employment and Self-Reliance. We're talking about the concept of working for yourself, making your own way in the world, finding that thing inside of you that says this is what you need to be doing, what we can call a calling in some respects, how to find what it is that you most love to do and how to make a career out of doing it. One of the central concepts to Eastern philosophy and a metaphysical view of Western and Middle Eastern philosophy, for that matter, is that spiritually, humanity is really one thing working itself out in separated form. Well, it suggests that there is a middle point called harmony and that there are no defective bits or pieces, that everybody has a particular talent or gift that they bring to this life that could be more harmonious, even unified, if you will, everybody working together with a common vision. So imagine a philosopher who is saying to you that if everybody did what they love to do, then everybody would be happy doing their career, their their job, their their gig. Everybody would be successful at it, in which case they do it even better, which would create even greater success. There'd be no unemployment, ideally. Now, this is a, an idealistic concept, of course, but what if that were true? What if none of us are broken pieces or bits, but each of us have innate within us some particular talent or gift or a series of gifts and talents that we could bring to career? Well, you take a look at primitive cultures or, you know, our culture of thousands and thousands of years ago, what that's what it was. You know, you did what you were good at. You did what you felt you could to contribute. And people said, well, we need this being done. And this guy's got a talent for that. So let's get him to do it. And then that's how it was. We found our niche by finding our gifts, talents, and abilities early in our lives and following along. Generally speaking, it was pretty much boys did men things and girls did women things back in the early days. And now, of course, we find that uh, any gender can do almost any job. But the fact is, we all have talents, gifts, and abilities within us that make us far, far better at doing certain kinds of jobs than other kinds of jobs. And helping ourselves discover that early in our lives is one of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves. As we record this particular episode in August of 2010, unemployment is hovering at eight or nine percent officially and in reality you factor in people who've given up or who are underemployed the numbers go to 20 percent and higher certain ethnic communities 40 percent 50 percent and higher and the conversation in the news is always when will the jobs come back well maybe the jobs are not going to come back at least not in the way we think of are the steel mills going to suddenly start up again it's not likely. Are we going to go through the kind of industrial expansion that we experienced through the the middle and actually the bulk of the 20th century? No, not really. And so new jobs will arrive, 21st century jobs. And if you're in a position of waiting for a job to come back or you're uncertain about the uh, the future you have of in the job you're in now, or maybe you just have a longing to do something you really would love to do. You're not sure what it is or, or even what you love to do, but wouldn't it be great if you could? Well, this program is for you. Yeah. Our passion is that everybody has the ability to create a career that they love. You just may have to pay some dues before you can have that thing that you love, you know, but you do have the right. You do have the ability to create a way of making a living, so to speak, doing something you really enjoy doing. And, and step one, of course, is to find a way to love doing something you're currently doing. So you get in practice of loving what you do, but maybe you don't love everything about what you currently do. But if you can find something about what you currently do that you could love, you can train your mind that that's what you're looking for. I'm looking for that in every aspect of my career. But, you know, it comes down to the idea of of self-employment versus being employed or being in a partnership. There's lots and lots of variables. There's dozens and dozens of different ways to do this thing of creating your career. But I think 
it's important to define the term. We're not talking about jobs here. A job is something that you do. It's a nine to five thing that you, you do to get money to pay your bills. That's what a job is. You could leave it. You could take it. You could go to a different job. A career is different than that. A career is something you make an investment in because what you're looking for is advancement. A career is about moving forward toward a, a series of goals or ideas. It's about getting bigger, better. It's about improving and growing within a structure of a company. That's what a career is. But even deeper than that, I think there's this thing of a calling, and not not just in the religious sense of someone called to be a minister or called to praise a certain religion, but someone who's called to do something else. Someone who's called to be someone who teaches. You're just called to take. You've always known that you've wanted to teach. Someone who's called to nurse or to heal. Someone who's called to do different things. People find early in their lives Little children start fantasizing early in their lives about being things, doing things, creating things. It's a matter of finding that gift, talent, and ability. The earlier, the better. But whether you're self-employed or in a partnership or employed, I think the goal has to be moving toward a place where you get to do what you love for a living. Exactly. Listen to the phrase, for a living. We err, I think, if we believe that a job or a career or a profession, a gig, whatever you want to call it, is just something that we do to make money so that we can go live a life over here in these non-work hours. It's all part of a living, and you are a living. You are a living being, but too often we find ourselves being a human doing. It's almost like we have this guilty feeling that we have a responsibility to earn our right to even breathe the air or to walk down the street. Everybody's got to be productive. Well, first of all, everybody is productive and creative and has innate within them, as Steve was saying, some sort of calling, some sort of magnetic attraction to a Oh boy, golly gee, wouldn't it be neat if I could? And maybe you have a dream and you just need us to encourage you to move toward that dream, to begin, as we say, with the end in mind, and then step by step move in the direction of manifesting that dream. And maybe the dream is not very clear at all. It's just this vague longing, or in some cases it may feel like a drive, like you're compelled to do something, even if you're not sure what it is. We want you to follow those urges. And notice, sometimes your brain is going to talk you out of it. Your mind, that is, your mental nature, your thoughts and ideas will argue against what the heart longs to do. It will be reasonable. That's a way of saying it's going to tell you all these reasons why you can't follow your heart. There's a certain amount of trust and and faith that is part of self-reliance, that we need to learn to trust not only the intelligence of our mental nature, but the intelligence of our emotional nature. And I think when it comes to the really personal, really subjective stuff, I favor the heart over the head. Yeah, follow your heart as guided by your brain. I mean, we can't put the brain ahead of the heart in this particular issue because what you want the most, I mean, that calling that you have, that career path that would be most elegant for you to take isn't a logical choice. It's not like if it was a lot, I mean, logic is logic. So therefore everybody would choose the same thing. This is, this is an emotional choice. This is not so much what fits intellectually for me as much as what makes me happy. You know, what excites me, what pushes my button and turns me on and evokes my passion. That's what I'm looking for. What is it that when I start doing it, I lose track of time. What is it that when I start doing it, I lose track of everything else. I just get so focused, so passionate about what is it that just grabs me and holds me and I just love being there. That's not a logical thing. That's a passion. That's an emotion. That's a heart mind thing. Now, again, guided by the brain, you know, like if you're sitting there with four kids and two mortgages and five tuitions to pay and all that stuff, and and your heart says, you need to go be an artist and paint paintings, you know, that doesn't mean you quit your job and don't quit your day job just yet, you know, and start, you know, what it means is that you find time in that busy, busy, busy life of yours to do some painting. 
and you take a step toward being a painter. You know, it's not a either or. It's not a black or white. It's it's a choice of having none or some, and some is huge, and none is incredibly powerful as a break. When you choose to not do something, you ingrain the habit of that choice. And the next time the opportunity comes up to do something, you're more likely to choose to not do something. So to choose to do something the first time, that opens everything up. To choose to just take one hour and paint something, you know, to choose to take any amount of time out of that busy life and move toward what you love, that's the secret. That's the first step. I'd like to invoke the name of two of America's best-known 19th century transcendentalists, and that's Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. Not only did they know each other, Emerson was sort of a mentor to Thoreau. His book on self-reliance and Thoreau's essays written out at Walden Pond, I keep thinking about as we talk about this program, because I think in the 21st century, we're going to have to find a balance between the all-out conspicuous consumption of the last century, especially the last half of the last century, and facing the reality in the 21st century that we have finite resources on this planet, and we can't just consume, use, abuse, and throw away without regard to the fact that eventually that throw-away mentality, that Society of conspicuous consumption is going to come back and bite us in the rear. We're going to have to be more balanced in that regard. And that brings up a number of self-reliance issues. But it's a kind of a, this is where I like to, to bring in this other idea, Steve, of appropriate technology and even voluntary simplicity when I talk about the balance. When Jerry Brown was governor of California in the 80s. He had an office of appropriate technology that he set up. And I thought, that is so smart. Think of it as we've got the power of computers now and and the Internet. For a week's pay, you can be online and as powerful as anybody who's ever owned a computer from the president of IBM on down. I mean, we have extraordinary opportunity with the Internet and, and with all the software programs and communication opportunities. This is information. This is knowledge. This is power. And the opportunities have never been greater. And yet, does it mean we have to turn to nuclear power or clean coal, if there even is such a thing? Couldn't we fall back to a middle position? And this is what Many people have been talking about ecologists and environmentalists since the early 1970s, even back to Rachel Carson and Silent Spring before that. This idea that we're going to have to get reasonable and find a balance. An appropriate technology, it's like, wow, what a relief and what a smart approach. Since you're always hearing from those that say, well, what do you want to do, you know, go back to the... 18th century, and we all have horses and kerosene lamps. You know, we have to buy oil from Saudi Arabia if you want your lights to burn. I don't think that's true. No, and we can't go back even to the 20th century anymore because it's a different world. Those jobs that went away aren't coming back. They went to foreign countries or they disappeared. And what we have to see, and and the trend is clear, in the last couple of years, we've gone from 19% self-employed to 25% self-employed. More and more people are finding that they can't get a job, so they got to create a career. And that's what's going to have to happen more and more. That's the nature of what's happening in the 21st century. For the most valuable asset, the most valuable valuable commodity in the world today is intellectual property. And there is virtually an infinite amount of that available. You can make stuff up. You can figure stuff out. You can find a way to take your gifts, talents, and abilities and match them to a human need and create a way of creating a career in that way. And that's what we're talking about doing is finding what you have special to offer and find what people need that fits with that and give them that. Now, being self-employed is not the first step for some people. I mean, if you have a good job, it's not quit it and do this, but, but to find a way to move toward doing what you're most passionate about doing in your life more and more of the time is really the key. 
we're talking about a new world, a 21st century, where more and more people are going to have to be self-reliant, self-employed. We're moving away from that concept we lived with for most of the 20th century, which is that everything is getting better in every way. Well, things are getting worse in some ways. There's no doubt about it. The 21st century is the, the, the economy is worse than it was in the 20th century. Things are getting worse in some ways, and we have to understand that we can make the best out of a bad situation you know it's not like doom and gloom but the fact is we can't just have that same rosy look that we had in in the leave it to beaver 1950s things are different this is the 21st century now and what was real in the 20th century uh general motors and you know running the world is not true anymore the the world has changed and it's continuing to change even faster so These statistics of people becoming more and more self-employed is going to grow dramatically. I think we're going to lose more and more jobs in the in the as factories are are being phased out. You know, I mean, uh, the factory of tomorrow is only going to have two employees, a man and a dog. The man will be there to feed the dog and the dog will be there to make sure the man doesn't touch the equipment. I mean, you know, I think that's where we're headed. The idea of training children to work in factories is absurd. So. The times are changing. What we need to do is figure out our own gifts, talents, and abilities, match them with the human need, figure something out, make something up, and become self-employed. I mean, you know, I'm a poster child. This I've, I started my first career at 15 years old because I figured something out and decided to sell it to people. And I invented a speed reading technique, and I've made my living on it for all these years since. You touched on something. You flew over it so fast, and I was just about to speak to it anyway. So match it with a human need, Yes, you yes. said. As if that were just some small bit of it. That's a very important part. I mean, we're saying follow your heart, but as you indicated, Steve, be guided by the reasoning, the common sense, if you will, of the mind as well. Sort of let the the mind temper those dreams back into something that's reachable or attainable or, or even definable. Well, one of those reasons, when you start thinking about all of the things that you could do, all of the opportunities to make a difference, how about looking at what needs to be done. Now, there's a crazy idea. Yeah, we're going to emphasize looking inside over looking outside because you're already doing that, flipping through course catalogs at colleges and in junior colleges, looking at want ads and job boards and talking to friends and, and going to job fairs. We're going to emphasize looking inside at the longing, the calling, no question about it, but... It should line up with something that really needs to be done. Now, is there any shortage of things that need doing? (laughs) I don't think so. I don't think so. There's lots that needs to be done. Find a creative way to meet the need. And I would say number two, find something that needs to be done that a giant corporation, a multinational mega corporation is not likely to do or will probably continue to overlook. And those two factors are certainly going to give you a leg up. As more and more people move away from being employed by those giant multinational corporations, and I think that's clearly the trend, you know, they're finding the way to increase their profits is to fire people, and they're doing a really good job of increasing their profits by firing people. So the the idea of them starting to hire more and more people, it's possible in some cases, but I wouldn't depend on it. I think more and more people have to realize that security, you know, from the Latin for self-care, you know, the only real security is to work for yourself. You have a job working for somebody else, they could fire you anytime they want to. And, you know, you you could say, oh, well, no, I'm pretty much indispensable. Well, perhaps you are, but you're in the minority if you're indispensable in a giant corporation. Most uh, cogs in, can be replaced. And, and I've always, I've always thought that feeling, the feeling of Knowing it's mine, this business is mine. I mean, I I made it, I own it, I'm in charge of it. No no boss, nobody to tell me what to do. I decide my hours. I decide when I take vacations. So it may not be for everybody, but it's 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 heady and it's 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 so powerful. It's so wonderful to feel that free, to feel that in charge of your life. Like I don't have to punch a clock. I get to decide what I do, when I do, and how I do it. And and. I, I, I don't know. You know, when I was growing up, I had an uncle who essentially became my father and raised me, and he was a self-employed man, and he said two things to me that just, you know, he said, you know, give a good, firm handshake and look a person in the eye, and then he said, you know, if you can, work for yourself. If you can, be your own boss, because then you'll always like your boss, <laughs> you know? So that that was very powerful to me. 
The quotation in this week's personal empowerment newsletter that we sent out was by uh, R.G. Collingwood, and he said, Perfect freedom is reserved for those who work for themselves and do the work they love to do. Absolute freedom, perfect freedom is reserved for those people. If you really want that, as Steve described it a moment ago, heady feeling of being unlimited and unbounded and capable of doing pretty much whatever you want, it's an adventure. Adventures can be a little scary at times. you got to take some risk. But generally, if you keep your eye on the goal instead of the fake obstacles we tend to dream up out of our negative fantasies, you know, obstacles, those things you see only when you take your eyes off your goal. Keep your eye on the goal, think positive, and, you know, we all have little mistakes and problems along the way. That's part of the learning process, too. But success is built into everybody, and especially if you begin by looking at what people believe needs to be done, what they need, what they want done, and people will pay for quality. You might say, well, you know, how can I charge $100 an hour or $150 an hour for a service, or how can I get my hands on enough of a particular product to make a difference? Don't worry about it that way. Look at it in terms of what do people want, what do people need, and The saying, nature abhors a vacuum, while the market's the same way. Something needs doing and nobody else is doing it. Step right up and do it your way. That's the secret. Do it your way. Now, sometimes it's a matter of seeing that there's a need that needs to be met out there, and you don't have the talent or gift to meet it, but you know somebody else who does, and you're really good at selling them. So you can find somebody to partner with, and you could be the one that pushes them, that big builds them up and makes them, you know, and, and, and create a partnership. You could be the one who has the talent, but you're not really good at selling it, and you can go find somebody who doesn't really have the talent to do this thing you do, but boy, are they good at selling it. So it's, it's, you don't have to have all all the pieces yourself. You can find other people to match the pieces that you're missing. All you need to do is have something that's special and unique. Because if you just do something that everybody else does just about the same way everybody else does it, then nobody's going to pay any money for that. But if you do something different, something special, something unique that is, is you, born out of you, born out of your unique gifts, talents, and abilities, then nobody else can do that quite the way you can do that. And you get paid a whole lot of money for that. In fact, that's the people who do get paid a whole lot of money. If you think of the professional athletes and the actors and actresses, you know the people who have a talent, the people who who figure out a way to come up with an idea, open a business, and sell a product or a service. You know those are the ones that are the most successful people in our society. The ones that have special ta- special gift, talent, and ability. Most people don't have, and they take that gift, talent, and ability, and they. Yeah, they do something with it. They take their focused passion and then they make something happen. And you know, it's it's again, it's not for everybody. It might be that for you to find your real calling is just to have a job that goes easy for you, that you don't mind at all, is okay, and you have all the rest of your time to put into your avocation, your passion, your hobby. That that could be the way it works best for you. But if you have a job and then all your rest of your time you're like watching TV or not thinking about you, know, you don't really have a great passion going on the rest of the time, then then you need to do better than a job. You need If there's no passion outside of the job, you need to take get rid of the job and find a career. Get rid of the job and find a calling. Uh, maybe it's a career that has some future advancement that that you can take a look at the idea of self-care and putting some money away for retirement and having security in your life or maybe it's a way of finding your real calling and going for it you know but if if you've got uh, a lot of space in your life that isn't filled with passion then this is what you need to be doing is finding that big passion and pursuing it try this right now imagine you've got untold wealth available to you. You've inherited hundreds of millions of dollars. You have so much money, you hire people to handle the money, you're not even sure how much you have. You even hire people to watch over those people. Yeah, that are, of course. You know, I mean, and, <laughs> yeah. and you've already, let's say, traveled the world and you bought a bunch of houses, one on every continent, and you bought some cars and you partied and okay, you did that, right? Now you're laying around the pool at one of your mansions And you're bored silly. And you've been there and you've done that. You've purchased everything that can be purchased. You've done everything you could do with money. And the truth of the matter is, 
you're bored out of your mind. What would you go do? Now slow down. Take a breath even. And you're really, really bored. You're not content. The money filled you up, but only for a while. Now you don't feel fulfilled. There's something more that needs to be done. Don't even think in terms of job or career or having to earn money. Just what what would I go do if money was not an issue at all and I'm bored? What would you go do? Now ask yourself, secondly, why am I not doing more of that now? Why am I denying myself the opportunity to do a little more of that and a little more of that? Maybe as a volunteer, maybe as a mentor or a coach of some sort. Uh, Maybe just studying a little bit to bring yourself up to speed because you used to be really into this particular area, but you sort of let it lapse, and so now you've got to read a few books and magazine articles to get up to speed. Then why have you resisted doing that? What lies are you telling yourself to justify the fact that you're refusing to follow your heart? Yeah, there are a lot of people who just don't know what to do. I mean, they just don't have a clue as to like what their gifts, talents, and abilities really are, and, and they're just doing job after job, and they don't really even have a way of figuring it out. Well, when you're that confused about yourself, when you really don't know, you know, exactly what's special about you, the best thing to do is to talk to those people that know you the best and ask what they admire about you. What what do they think you're great at? What what do the people that are closest to you see that's special about you? Because you'll get honest feedback from the people that are closest to you, and they can perhaps, you know, help you see the forest for the trees, help you see something that you thought you were just sort of average at, but everybody else goes, oh, no, man, you're the best at that. I mean, I've never seen anybody as good at this as you are. Get some feedback if you need it. But the best place to get the feedback, I think, of course, is from yourself, from your higher self. It's just a st- Step back and take a look at yourself. Observe your day. Observe your life and notice what comes easy. Notice what stresses you out and notice what things you're looking forward to. And, and, you know, whatever it is that you're looking forward to, whatever it is that brings a smile to your face and a twinkle to your eye, you know, those are the kinds of things you get to do a lot of the time. You get to have a relationship that makes you feel that way with your spouse, with your kids, with your best friends, and you get to have a career or a, a calling or a, a, a thing you do, a, a philanthropic endeavor, whatever it happens to be that you do that brings that same smile to your face, that same glow to your heart and that same twinkle to your eye. So if you don't know what it is that's special about you, then ask some people. They'll, they'll tell you because you are different than anybody that's ever been and That means, in some ways, you must, in fact, be special. Now, one more point I want to make is, while apparently there really is this condition, this personality type in society, I think it's called Asperger's Syndrome, and these are men and women who are sort of introverted. They're not real social. They're rather antisocial, but they do really well alone. They like high-tech things. They like science and math. They like order in their lives, and they're often very, very good at computers and scientific, mathematic types of things, but a little low on the aptitude of having lots of friends and being socially interactive. Unless you count Facebook friends. Sometimes they have lots of those. That may be. I'm (laughs) not sure. But the bulk of us are very social. And if there are groups of people in the middle, you could be more social than you are. And my point is to understand what I've learned as relationship management from the larger field of emotional intelligence. Relationship management. Listen to the phrase. It's one of Daniel Goleman's terms. He he was the pioneer at Harvard of emotional intelligence. Relationship management. I've seen a book, Appreciation Marketing, recently that I really liked. What's appreciation marketing? Well... It's expressing your gratitude to your customers in a regular way. That is a form of the larger relationship management. If you put people first in your life, it's amazing how business will flow. There's another book, a classic from I think the early 80s or mid 80s called The E-Myth that says the reason most businesses fail is that the person that starts the business may know the business 
but they don't know people. So the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker will set up shop and be very good at what they do, but not so good when it comes to managing people or motivating people. Most, most people in business manage the way they were parented and manage the way they parent, and it's rather strict and authoritarian and old school and not the best way to motivate people. So if you're a butcher or a baker or a candlestick maker, you have a talent, a gift, or an ability, but you're not a people person. You're not, you don't know how to go out and get people to buy candlesticks or buy bread, you know, that what you need to do is find somebody who likes to sell you, you know. And if you're great at selling things, but you can't sell yourself, but you could sell somebody else that you believe in. If you found something, a cause or a person or a product or a service that you believe in, you could sell the heck out of that. Well, then you go find somebody who's doing that and, and, and help them be successful. I think that's really one of the greatest keys. I think it was Napoleon Hill talked about find, make somebody else prosperous. You know, if you, if you want to be prosperous, make somebody else prosperous. And, and it'll it'll come back at you it, probably ten times. So, so it, you might be the one with the talent that is saleable right now in our society. And if so, get somebody to help you sell it. Or you might be the one that knows how to sell things to people. And, if, and you don't have the talent people are looking for right now. Besides that, find somebody who's got that product or service and match up with them. It's it's finding a human need and meeting it. And maybe you can do that by yourself, or maybe you can do that in a team. But the idea of hoping that more and more jobs are going to open up on the corporate front is not really likely. You know, more and more jobs are going to have to be created through services and through sale of intellectual property because, you know, the actual physical product stuff is much more expensive to start a business that way. Some people can, but to start a business with, with intellectual property or with service is, is a much cheaper and easier way to go for most people. More and more businesses are going to have to start that way, I believe. Yeah. And be sure to develop your talent as, as a relationship manager and put people first. Learn the tools and the skills of a good firm handshake, honest eye contact, a open and receptive demeanor. Learn to be a good listener. Compliment people. Avoid the temptation to use barroom language and the kind of negativity around politics and anger and hostility that really has no no place in the workplace and really very little place in your life when it comes to being cynical and sharing that. It's amazing to me how much daily communication is negative and cynical and, and people venting. And that's not at all what we mean by relationship management. It's being uplifting and kind. It's It's giving without any real thought of getting anything in return. It's the golden rule in business, treating everybody, your customers, but also your boss and your coworkers and people that work for you, vendors and jobbers and every place, driving power down with gratitude and appreciation. And, and I, I swear, if you, if you do that, then the rest of business is going to follow in most cases. And you don't feel you have those strong skills, and be sure and develop them. Everybody's heard the business axiom of, of providing more than is expected of you, but often people don't know what that means. Does that mean I have to reduce my price and give them a greater value or greater quality? Or, Well, often all it means is to acknowledge your gratitude and appreciation to your customer in a regular way. Stay in touch with them. Treat them like a friend. And guess what? You create a quality of loyalty where they are your friend. You get more repeat business, more referrals. Put the people first. Yeah, it's it's always going to come down to that putting the people first. And whatever it is that you love to do, you spend your time doing, people are going to enjoy being around you when you do that. People are going to want the product of that passion, that love. That's, that's what sells, you know. It's what people want. They want something that was made with love, with made with care, made with or, or presented with passion. It, it's, it's just what people want. So whether you decide, yes, I do want to be self-employed, I want to work for myself, or whether you decide that whatever it is that you love and to do and you're so passionate about, you're going to find some time in your hobby or in, in, in somewhere in your life for that, 
it's now time to start finding that passion and making it happen, finding that thing, that calling inside of you that says, these are your gifts, talents, and abilities. You put them together in this way, and it makes you smile. It makes you feel good. It makes you grow. It makes you happier. It's like it's like the plant inside you that's reaching for the sun. It wants to go in that direction because that's where the warmth is. That's where the, the light is. That's where the heat is, and, and that's where the energy is. So that's what you need to do. Where's the energy? Go with your energy. Go with that feeling of this is what draws me. This is what calls me. And, and there's something inside side of you that that you're made to do that i don't mean that you know it's necessarily inside your dna but you you take a look at all the experiences you've had in your life and match that connect that with all the genetic materials that you have something is going to come out of that that soup that is you uniquely you and there's something that makes the uniquely you happier than anything else so you're waiting for the jobs to come back or you've got a job and it's a good job. Maybe you even like your job, but you're a little insecure because of this drumbeat that's been going on for decades now about how jobs are being shipped overseas where labor is cheap. Or maybe you really are in a kind of a career crisis and and you just shudder to think of another decade, another year even doing what you're doing. Well, of course, you're going to look out into the world. You're going to be well-informed. You're going to, as we mentioned before, flip through those course catalogs and look at the job boards and the want ads and go to the job fairs. Do all that due diligence. But in addition to that, or let me say, and in addition to that, (laughs) do this. Now, close your eyes, get comfortable. I want you to sit straight up, but not rigid like you're a two-by-four. Think of yourself as being balanced and relaxed so that all the muscles along your spine can let go. And the spine is just stacked perfectly. All the little vertebrae and little bones and discs and filaments and such are just ah, perfectly lined up. Okay? As you begin to breathe, at first, just oh, two or three nice, slow, deep breaths, inhaling through your nose. Hold as you peak, and then as you exhale, create and sense a feeling of letting go, feeling safe and relaxed. And with every breath that you release, you feel the inner peace, the noise inside your brain does cease and you unwind in body and in mind. And in this case, you find yourself in a paradise place, a peaceful place, a quiet place, a calm, serene, and tranquil place that you create. It's really nice. It's paradise. And in paradise, what you bring are all or some of your favorite things, your favorite memories, your favorite fantasies, your favorite things to do. The happiest moments you've ever had, you bring those here with you, here in paradise. It's really nice. And you get clear. Because in paradise, there is no fear. Here. So whatever feels best, whatever feels great, whatever memories or fantasies or whatever you create, here is clear. Free of fear. And you can see what you most wish to be. I'd like you to imagine that you own a time machine. I remember the movie about the time machine. It looked sort of like a sled, that one. If I imagine a time machine that I invented, it would be 
sort of a closet that you get into, and I have my own sense of how the dials and gauges would look, but I'd like you to make up your own. Dream it up. If you had a time machine that could take you into the future, what would it look like? And trust your first impression. What would it feel like to get in that time machine, knowing you're absolutely safe? This is a proven machine. It is safe and effective. Brings you to the future and back. Takes you to the past and back. No doubts, right? No worries. And I'd like you to set the machine to take you into your future to a time when you have found your calling. When you've got the ideal vocation or avocation. A time when you're doing something you really love to do. When you pop out of bed in the morning and can't wait to begin doing what you do for a living. Listen to those words. I do this for a living. It's not just a job. It's more even than a career or a profession. This is my living. My living contribution to the world. And gosh, it makes me feel so good. And push the button or pull the lever or turn the gauge now or do whatever you need to do to go to that time and open the door and step out. And step out into a work-play environment. Might be a lab, might be an office, it might be outdoors, it could be with a lot of people, it might be with a few people. It could look like a factory or a library or a scientific laboratory. Just about anything that you can imagine. And you see yourself there. And you hear the sounds, smell the smells, feel as if you're really there. And you notice a sense of pride growing inside, you notice a a sense of self-esteem. It's even greater in this dream. And you're passionate and you're excited and your mind is very clear and you're really, really happy, really happy to be here doing this with the bliss that it creates. I mean, you left good far behind. This is truly great. Imagine it. And then this time machine that's taking you here. Imagine it crystal clear. This is the future that you can create. And it might be this or something better. You'll have to wait. You'll see. But this is what you can aim at. This is the focus of your future reality. And you might change your mind as you move along the way, but for now, that's the focus, and that's where your focus will stay for the moment on this future that you wish to create. That's way beyond good. It's well into great. Imagine it and take a step inside of your mind that says, yes, I do. I commit to making my dream come true. And feel how it feels to be this free. You realize this may be, at least you may be approaching the ultimate in freedom. This is purpose. This is power. And yet it's orchestrated with ease and elegance, and you feel prosperous as well as free. Prosperous financially, but more than that, you have the prosperity of health. You have the prosperity of loving relationships. You can feel now the prosperity of knowing that your product or your service 
benefits everyone who even gets near it, that no one loses in your service to the community. And you feel prosperous in that you know you're giving people even more than they expect. And you put people ahead of business. How much love can you handle at work? And how soon before you stop calling it work and think of this as an enterprise It's just full of love and light, ease and grace and elegance and This is the way it should be and the way it can be for everyone, for anyone who takes the time to feel what you're feeling right now and those willing to trust that feeling and move on that feeling. What you deserve to do, what you most love to do, For part of every day of your life, you deserve to do what you most love to do for part of every day of your life. So take a step, one step, in that direction. Starts with the choice, making the selection. What is it I choose to do, be, create? What will take me from this place that's good to that place called great? What do I need? Where do I need to go? What do I need to get? What do I need to know? What dues do I need to pay along the way? How can I begin? Because there's something in me that wants to begin. Something in me that wants to start now. Something in me that says... That's where I'm going to go, and I'm going to get there somehow. You don't have to know exactly how it's going to be. You don't have to know the way. You just focus on the destination you see, and you'll figure it out step by step as you play. Know what you love, and know that you do deserve to do that. Yes, you do in your life, every day. You deserve to do what you most love to do every day. Feel that, know that, believe that, and you are well on your way. Now choose an initial action step. One thing could be a real big thing or even a smallish kind of a thing, but one thing, trust your intuition, that you can do today, still today, or first thing tomorrow, to begin to move in the direction of manifesting this dream. Just one thing, your, your next action step. Tomorrow you can sit down and think about a few more. See yourself taking that action step. Remind yourself it's a choice. You don't have to do it. But you've been denying it. When do you say yes to love? When do you say yes to your passion? When do you say yes to, I trust my intuition, it's pretty darn smart, and yeah, I'll do that one thing. See yourself doing that as you reorient yourself to the sound of our voices, remembering the room you'll see again in just a moment, As you inhale slowly and fill your lungs, and as you exhale, ah, feel yourself taking that step forward, eyes open, wide awake, back in the room, feeling fine, better than before, safe and relaxed. So it's in you to find something special to do. I mean, a lot of those jobs are going away, and if you can find a work that feels more like play, then what I say is go for it. You know, I've 
both you, you and I have done what we've loved to do for so long. You were employed for a good chunk of your life, but you've been self-employed for a long, long time now, and I've always been self-employed, and there's something real special about it. It's not for everybody, perhaps, but if you're not sure, you know, just close your eyes, ask yourself, would I rather work for myself or would I rather work for somebody else, and find out the answer to that. And once you know that, then ask yourself, would I rather spend most of my time with people or most of my time alone? And now you've sort of narrowed down that market a lot. You now you have a much clearer focus on what it is you want to do. But ask yourself questions about the career that you would ultimately love, even if you don't know the name of it yet. How far away from where you lived are you willing to go? And what kind of people do you want to be hanging out with? And what kind of hours do you want to be working? The more you can get an idea in your mind of what it is you'd really love to do, even if you can't name it yet, the more it becomes real in your mind, the more it manifests. You know, most communities, even smaller cities, have community colleges or junior colleges where if you stop by, regardless of your age, they, it, you'll find that in most cases they have a whole battery of tests. Often they'll give them to you for free that are pretty clever at helping uncover these hidden talents and gifts. And if you're at all confused and I'm sure you'll find value in the exercise we just did. So be sure and repeat that exercise, okay? Play this program over again. But you might want to check out your local community college if you're a kind of person that likes the test, you know, and you want to see what what the experts have to say. It's a kind of a personality inventory that um, is, they've, they've been developing these for 30, 40, 50 years, and, and they're pretty good. Even if they just spark an idea, you know, or an awareness, it's something to consider. Yeah, and remember, self-employed doesn't mean you have to be really great at tooting your own horn. Maybe you're self-employed tooting somebody else's horn. You know, again, if if what you have to offer isn't, like, marketable right now, the the – People are not clamoring for it. And yet, if you're the kind of person who, if you see a movie, uh, you can talk everybody into going to see that movie because it was such a great movie, then you could probably talk a lot of people into going to someone else's service or someone else's product. Uh, and that's such an important commodity. There's so many people out there with talent but don't have the skills, to the people skills, to go get people to check it out and find out how great it is. Be sure to use our Share One with a Friend gadget at the Home website, FocusedPassion.com. There's an E-D in there. That's the W's, FocusedPassion.com. And you'll see right below the built-in player this little tool you can use to forward as many of these as you want to as many different people as you'd like, as often as you'd like, and pay it forward that way. Think, who do I know that would really love the program I just heard on self-employment and self-reliance and maybe several people? Uh, go ahead and forward those programs. They're free of charge, part of the fee that you pay for listening to these programs at focusedpassion.com. Remember, if you ever want to write us, just use the email info at focusedpassion.com. Steve and I both get copies of that one or the other. Maybe both will <laughs> we'll respond to you. That's info at focusedpassion.com if you have any questions or comments. And remember, the uh, the library of uh old shows now is up to almost 150 so there's probably something in there that might just right now be what you need to hear to help you solve your problems or heal your heart and as always be gentle love life and take care of each other for steve snyder this is michael benner aloha from maui <laughs>